town you never heard of. Hey everybody, welcome to the Common Folk Podcast with Ben, Morgan, and Andy. Welcome back to the podcast. Yes, sir. Ready to go. You can't uh, do your signature can open because you've already opened it. I was thirsty today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Did you start wait. that in the car? <laughs> no, oh, no, no, I would no, never, would do, never that. do that. <laughs> Jeez. Wait, gosh, I, I forgot you're drinking a beer. I was thinking it was a soda. <laughs> I don't understand why you can't start it in the car, but I call don't know. I mean, call them road geez. sodas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, man, so on the intro there, Eric Bergett, we haven't talked about him for a little bit. Nah, and uh, the old algorithm caught up to me. You know how we tag him in all of our podcasts mm-hmm. and everything? Uh, I got into Spotify, wanted to listen to some music, and he was like the third artist, you know, in, in nice. front of all of them. Yeah. You know, that, that uh, Spotify thought, hey, you might want to listen to this guy. So it just populated? Yeah, so, uh, so that's what I've been listening to on Spotify. So they won. The algorithm beat my lizard brain. Jeez. Perfect. <laughs> and he's he's actually been releasing a lot of new music lately. Yeah. I like his videos. He's They're a sharp. Ton of, yeah, a ton of songs out. He's super um, active on social media, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's always posting a ton of stuff, but he's good, man. Is he a deer guy? I forget. He's from um, Illinois. Well, That's like the land of giants when it comes to big white-tailed bucks, deer. When you say deer, you oh, mean like- tractor. You're thinking game hunting. Oh, <laughs> yeah, where am I at? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, his, so his family farms in Illinois. Okay. I, but I couldn't remember if he was like I've red or green. I've seen some green equipment in okay. some of his videos, but I don't know if mm-hmm. they... Yeah, okay. I see a lot of bush light. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does I like bush light. That's, yeah. that's all right. Light. Yep. He's a good dude, though. That's but a, he probably hunts, too. Yeah, that's I a mean. clip off of one of his songs, uh, Town You Never Heard Of. Mm-hmm. Fits the podcast well, so we appreciate him. Shooting that over to us and doing that little uh, voiceover yeah. thingy. Hell yeah. Thank you, Eric. I've Honest to God, I've actually had people say, who wrote that song for you guys? That fits you guys so well. Who yeah. came up with that? Yeah. I'm like, well, thanks, but that, that's yeah. all Eric. And that yep. was before yep. us. <laughs> yeah, so go check him out. Um, he's got – I'm pretty sure you can you can stream his stuff on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen it oh, on yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what you're talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. So, Spotify yeah. told me to. So. Spotify. Yep. Um, I had set up a. I had made like a Pandora channel, with you know his mm-hmm. uh, like based off of his mm-hmm. or whatever. You can listen to his music and stuff like him. But, yep, good dude. So glad to work with him. Um, so the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about real quick, we wanted to try to do. We're starting to make some merchandise for the, um, for the Common Folk Podcast. Mm-hmm. And first of all, we've got a, uh, our main our main logo t-shirt. So we wanted to get that out. That's on uh, farmfocused.com, F-O-C-U-S-E-D.com. Um, but we're going to do a little giveaway. So we wanted to get folks, try to motivate folks to get on the apps. And best I can tell, if you want to if you want to comment and leave a review, probably the Apple podcast app mm-hmm. is the best one to do that yeah. on. So go on there, leave a review. Um, over the next week, we're going to look at all those reviews and draw one of those out and shoot you a message and send out some free T-shirts. So. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And I'm yeah. saying good, bad, or ugly. Like, I want to hear it all. You, you know right. what I mean? Yep. I mean, Ooh. appreciate Are you some sure nice about things. That? Uh, you know, that's what the internet was kind of made for, <laughs> right? right? <Yeah. laughs> it's not all pretty. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. I guess so. But I mean, if there's some good suggestions out there or if we're being too crass on a couple of subjects, I'd yep. like to hear that. Yeah, yep. or topics. Yeah, throw some topics at us I that think you'd want to cover. That would be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, topics, ideas. We're always looking for topics, so that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. So, yeah, get on there, um, do some reviews, let us know what you think. Helps us. It helps the um, the algorithms. Yes, it does. And, uh, and we'll shoot out some free T-shirts. So Right on. And they're good-looking T-shirts. I'll, I'll say that. They're, they're yeah. very nice. They uh, they get noticed. I, they started a couple of conversations with me. I'm just wearing that yep. T-shirt and like, oh, podcast. You're on a podcast? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll just say, because I don't think – trying to get people to do this is pretty tough. So hopefully it's not going to be committing too much. I'll say for every review that's posted, we will send you a free t-shirt. Oh, right dang. oh boy. Here we go. Yep. All right. I like, like it. Like the first week here? We're that is out? aggressive. Yeah. Here over the next week. Okay. Once this, once this so, drops. And, and the, the easiest and most available that we can kind of tell is on, over the Apple yep. uh, podcast platform, which a lot of folks... You know, they're either on Spotify, Apple, or Google, but it seems like 
if you want to get into all your different podcasts, you kind of have all three downloaded. Yep. So most people do right. have that app. The best thing to do would be go on there, write the review, um, rate the show five stars, and shoot us an email that you did the review. There we go. Ben at farm focused f o c u s e d dot com. Oh, you're gonna be blowing up. You got a t-shirt coming your way. There we go. Some All free right. merch. Love it. Yep. Yep. All right. So moving on. Um, kind of a hot topic right now is this student loan debt forgiveness and what's all going on with that. Mm. Hmm. That's a hot topic? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter about it. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there is. Uh, and uh, the headlines, I'll use the word aggressive once again, depending on which um, national media circuit you kind of follow or get your news from, it's totally one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, places like Fox News says you're just you're just buying votes. You're just giving mm. away money, getting rid of debt to get votes come November. Uh, and the other side is like, no, it's the right thing to do, taking the moral high ground. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty tough argument to beat. Well, you're going to hell. You know, that's, yeah. where do you go from that? So they're both really two overwhelming like I said, aggressive arguments there. So, yeah, we wanted to kind of put a common folk uh, spin on, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, we've we've all all of us here in one way or another, well, it, whether it was ourselves or our children, have had experience with uh, college and paying for college and how all that works. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're I mean, we're just we're just regular everyday people, and I wanted to talk about yeah. how it went for us. Um, you know, what our expectations were, how we made it work. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like anything else. What we talk about is it's reflective of so much of the majority, you know, yeah. the, the silent yep. majority, really. Yep. Um, so, you know, like like you talked about there in the beginning, the, um, the, the, the votes, you're buying votes, you know, that kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I think that's not quite the beginning of the conversation, but it is something that I want to touch on because I just don't really see any way around that. Yeah. How it's not that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously I mean. there's a political slant to it, yeah. right? Uh, but I, I got a good starting point for okay. us. Okay. And uh, went to ProCon.org. So totally non-biased website here. Mm-hmm. Trying to give us both sides of the spectrum. And I'll just read Pro1 versus Con1. Okay. Pro1. Student loan debt is slowing the national economy. Forgiveness would boost the economy, benefiting everyone. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> we both go. Hmm. I mean, uh, the, the I I can see the the reasoning behind that. If you know, if they're saying, "All right, um, you know, people have have this bill to pay first mm-hmm. before they can go out and buy a TV." Yeah, right. A flat screen. Yeah, um, I can see that. Uh, that being said, I don't know. I don't really feel like that's. Well, That's here, a major driver for economic decline. Well, here's what William Foster, vice president of senior credit officer, explained. The U.S. quotes, U.S. real GDP would be boosted on average by $86 billion to $108 billion per year, which is quite a bit, dot, dot, dot. That's if you had total loan forgiveness, end quote. So he, they, like exactly what you're saying. There'd be that much more from 86 to $108 billion more dollars to go out and buy a flat screen, Available, yeah. yeah, yeah, go out and you know buy a new car, or something, something to that and, effect. And yeah, I mean, it it, it would be, mm-hmm. but um, you know, the other side of this is this this do, doesn't just vanish into thin air. Like somebody's still going to pay for. Well, it. that's what I keep thinking. Where is this money? coming from does that yeah. sound, I, it kind of <laughs> sounds stupid when i actually think about it yeah. are we just printing more money yes I mean, and that's why the dollar is weak yeah <laughs> i yeah. mean what the heck i mean it, it, it's going to make its way one way or another into yeah. taxes i mean it has, has to. to yeah yeah uh so the piper again, needs to be paid yeah so one if you way or another so so you robin peter to pay paul Kind of. In a way. So if they say, you know, all right, well, this is going to make so much more money available for the economy to spend, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right now. Yeah. But then if if a bunch of different tax bills go up and stuff and, and tax incentives go away and these types of things, well, that's less money that yeah. the the masses have mm-hmm. rather than the, 
the You're group hamstring of, in the future, kind of. Yeah, you know, just, in a way? it just doesn't seem to add so, up. So con one that's on the opposite side of the first pro here is student loan forgiveness is an abuse of the loan system. People must be held responsible for their personal economic choices. Once again, I feel like that is such a, well, duh. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. stupid saying that out yeah. loud. Of course, if you borrow, you have to give it back. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the basis on so many principles we have as a culture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? And 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 you gotta wonder. I mean, we're right now today, we're on the brink of sending a high school senior to college next year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she is going most likely going to have to get loans in one way or another. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of how we've set up our financial situation. We're gonna have to get some loans. Um. So you know. Folks like me wonder, so if I would have had my daughter four years earlier, mm-hmm. then I'm going to get a bunch of money? Right. Like, so so now, like, if I go and sign her up for loans now, are you going to do this for the future? Am I going to get, like, a free 10 grand just in case? Just in case. To yeah. send her? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, so all the people that did all this, they're, they're going to get some money back. And, and so then now are they saying, all right, now all you who's going to start getting loans now— Make sure you learn from this. Make good decisions. We're mm-hmm. going to give all them money, but you you just make sure you make yeah. good decisions. So yeah, yeah. what's the criteria here? Like it's a certain year? No, it's basically like it's, any outstanding student loan right now. It's pretty but great. But right now, is it when is it going to end? Is there an you know what I mean? Oh, is it I don't from know. 2000 yeah, and yeah. whatever? I don't to, think they've really got into that. Okay. I mean, it's just so much the, la-la land right now. Okay. The little yeah. bit that I've gathered is that it's... Each one of these is going to get like ten thousand dollars off of their loan. Okay. Which, that's a whole nother conversation. I'll say a couple things on that. But there's also a specific type of loan. I can't remember what it's called, but it was for like more low income families would qualify for this type of loan. Okay. And those folks are getting twenty. Okay. And that is from some of the numbers I've heard, like sixty percent or more of the loans that are out there. Oh yeah. So those folks are going to get twenty off, and all the rest of them are going to get ten off. And here's the thing. There's a ton of people with six-digit college loans. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. they're going to get $10,000. I mean, it's yep. it's yep. A, it really Because your mom and dad had a job when you grew up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a terrible household, you yeah. know, where you yeah. had a dual income. And it's it's almost a drop in the bucket. And so you go back to that um, mm-hmm. you know, that buying votes thing. It it makes those folks feel really good. Oh, I I you know now I that just saved me ten grand. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you're still on the hook, and they still yeah. got you. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They didn't they didn't wipe away your whole loan. Right. And they're yeah. gonna be able to use. Let, let's say you have a hundred thousand out there right now, and they give you ten. Now you got ninety. They're gonna be able to continue to use that ninety against you. Sure. As as they it's, go it, on. Yeah. You know? It's a it's a part of control. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Matthew knows N O Y E S. We'll give him a quote since we we let Matt William Foster speak his piece. But he's a columnist at the Lone Conservative. His quote goes something like this, and he he uh, talked at length how he had to make a lot of sacrifices back in the day to pay off his twenty seven thousand dollars of student student loan that he had, and he has paid it off. Quote: Taking out a loan is a choice and a personal responsibility. Shouldn't be supplanted by taxpayer bailouts. Canceling student loans means penalizing people like me for honoring my word and repaying the debt I chose to accept. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what you're saying. There, the man. only way for, for this to be fair for all borrowers, or actually for anybody that went to college for that matter, is to go back through all of those years. So if, if they say like, okay, this is 20 years of student loans that mm-hmm. we're going to go through and we're going to give uh, forgiveness. And get the name and address of every single person that went to college and finished it mm-hmm. in those 20 years and also send them 10, 10 grand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Sounds, the only that's the only way and, to make it fair for not for e- college kids. For and it's not even fair across the spectrum there because what about a, the really good people and we've had a few of them on our show already uh, that didn't go to college. Yeah. yeah. Why are they on the hook helping pay back yeah. this and when we're getting back in the tax dollars that's ultimately going to pay for this? They didn't go to college. They're making their way. Now they have to bail out, you know, their counterparts that did go to college and, and are having a tough time with it. Right. And there was probably plenty of them that made the decision not to go to college because they knew they couldn't afford it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they couldn't take on. They didn't. They couldn't afford it. They didn't want that debt. Yeah. Or whatever the case yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Or, Either way, they shouldn't be on the hook for paying right. off someone else's debt. Right. Well, or for me, I mean, I went for a couple of years and realized that was not my thing. But went to trade school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's so many trades out there. Yeah. That you still have to pay for that. I mean, were we going to talk about trade school? That like. That would pay for someone's trade. You know, I mean, I just. But that's not as big as grab. And that's I get not as it. sexy. That doesn't but it grab just head. Seems, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 There's so many different things that seem so wrong. The, yeah. This in is all so unfair this. across the board. Here's the pro, too, though. We're going to make it more fair. We okay. got to we gotta, we gotta go down it. both sides here, guys. Student loan, pro number two. Student loan, student loan debt has disap- disappropriately hurt black students. Forgiveness could help rectify racial inequality. So yeah. I think that's kind of getting at what you were talking about. I mean, when you're talking about urban, yeah, you know, people from the urban environment overall um, and lower household incomes. Yeah. I think that's kind of what this is trying to really get into here. Yeah. They're saying that, yeah, that they're, and I've heard that on a few different outlets that um, the black community is, is dis. Disproportionately, yeah, yeah it's totally butchered that by word. these loans, <laughs> and um, you know, and I, and I think that's probably said with a lot of different things, you know, mortgages and home values and all these kinds of things. You know, like it's said a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, d- they probably have uh, real numbers on um, African American borrowers compared to white borrowers, and how many that you know what those numbers are. So mm-hmm, they're probably, yeah. you know, they're probably saying that like. There's more African American students taking loans than white students, you know. So okay, yeah. Then I guess that means yes, they have more debt that way. I understand that, but um, again, everybody has a choice, and you know, you you take us. You're listening to us. You know, folks have have gotten to know us a little bit by way of this podcast, and uh, we didn't come from like a bunch of money. So as an mm-hmm. example to talk about what you know what they're talking about there. When I went to school, my parents had a few thousand dollars saved up. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like 5 grand or something like that. Yep, yep. I went to the Univ- University of Nebraska Lincoln and went and you know did the whole thing. So mm-hmm. you know, room and board, tuition, fuel for my car, you know, books, I mean Food. all this kind of yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a scholarship. Um, so they gave me that money and then the rest of it, we had to figure out how are we going to cover it? Yeah. So then I bounced back and forth in the university of Nebraska system between Omaha and Lincoln and got myself a full-time job and my job offered tuition reimbursement. There you go. So, and it was, it was a couple thousand dollars a semester. Mm -hmm. So what did I decide to do? I decided to work during the day, mostly do evening and, and night classes, mm-hmm. pay for it, submit that bill back to my employer, get a fair amount of that money back, yep, reimburse get it yourself. paid for, mm-hmm. yep, and, and work that system, yeah. and go to school, go, go to the University of Nebraska mm-hmm. for a few thousand dollars a semester. Yep, there you go. You know, rather than yeah. 50000 or whatever, yeah. you know, that a yep. lot of these big schools are. Oh, it's insane. And hey. it taking you longer to go to school because you had to work had, full time. To, and you had to stretch it out. And, and yeah. you could only afford so many credit hours that yeah. semester, yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. It wasn't, never did it cross my mind of, let me go take out a bunch of money and rack up 30, 40, 50 grand so that I'm going to have to pay that when I get out. Yeah. It was, let me try to figure out how to make this work as I'm going. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was what I did. I didn't have a handout from mom and dad, just like what they said earlier on that pro, that pro mm-hmm. that is disproportionately affecting these black students. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a handout from mom and dad, but neither did right. I. Right. And I think that kind of goes into the stat that Judith Scott Clayton, senior research scholar with the Community College Research Center of Columbia University, uh, she makes the claim in one of her studies that interest rates um, and loans leave black students, graduates, with twice as much debt as whites. Well, yeah, if you're starting from behind the eight ball, you're going to have more debt. Happen. Yeah. You, you know, and, and that's not – I feel like that's not just – a reflective of the African-American demographic. That's like me too. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a town of 300 people. 
Okay, there was one bank, there was one gas station. You know, it's not like I came from a bunch of money either. Mm-hmm. You know, so like put me in that as well. Like I could easily insert myself uh, into that stat. And I think this kind of plays in this next uh, little excerpt from her. I want to read it real quick here. The disparity, she explains, is a result of most black students who default having attended predatory for-profit colleges that have overall higher default rates for all students. So I do agree with that in a, in a part that, of course, these colleges are for-profit. Mm-hmm. They are. It's okay? a business. It is a business. And they have sold us a bill of goods, like made us believe that we need to go to college to get a good job. And now I think we've all kind of come to realize or we're looking at through a different lens, like, do we really need to drop $50,000 a year to get drunk right. and watch football games? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, do we really need and that? say you went to this college? Yeah, yeah. I think so. She She's onto something there. I really do believe that. And just like all for-profit businesses, uh, these colleges have pushed it as far as they could push it. And if they can get more out of this demographic or that, they don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, that's... Yeah. It's one thing I, you know, kind of uh, appreciated about marketing. One of my, you know, uh, majors, uh, it has blindfolders on. Like, it does not care if you're black, if you're white, if you're old, if you're young. Marketing is all about getting you to buy a product. Mm -hmm. And they don't give, I mean, they don't care. Black people buy Sprite, LeBron James. Sell me some Sprite. Co- Kobe Bryant, sell me some Sprite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Old people watch Matlock. Matlock, sell me some uh, life insurance. Mm-hmm. Like it does not care. Marketing is marketing. Yeah. And I think uh, some of the best marketers out there are these public universities for profit. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we could have a whole other podcast on this, but really that is, I think everyone, I think logical folks, mm-hmm. mostly common folks, understand that uh, that's the real problem here. It's not the loans. It's yeah. not It's not predatory loans and so on and so forth. It's sure. that these colleges are charging way too much. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a whole other conversation. But, you know, some of the prices uh, to go to school are absolutely yeah. ridiculous. It is. And, it, and that, that just is, you know, and it, and it creates a situation where loans like this are required because people don't have enough money to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that and then just, you know, society and, and um, corporate America's – focus on that degree because there you you still you could find folks today that work at corporations that cannot get that next raise or that next position oh yeah because the corporation says that one's going to require a master's degree one of one of my best friends longtime great friends worked uh for walgreens since the time he was like 14 and still works there now and he hit this glass ceiling so fast like in school while he was going to college, didn't quite work it out, you know, didn't graduate. And they kept trying to promote him because he was the best. He was the best in the area. So they'd move him here, move him there. And they finally just told him, like, look, you need to get a four-year degree so we can put you where you need to be, where we want you to be. And part of that makes me think, like, well, if they actually can realize that and see that and draw that up, why? 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 Why do you need the four-year degree? Yeah. And so he did the night class thing, the Bellevue University, this and that, you know, worked it in. Mm-hmm. And as soon as he got it, boom, boom, promotions left and right, you know, kind yep. of could dictate his And all you had was that piece of paper. I all just I was, was thinking that yeah. piece of paper. And, I mean, it was night classes. It was internet classes. Like, Come God, on. do you really think he got anything out of it? Yeah. Do you even know that he did it? Was it his right. wife? Was right. it his <laughs> – Yeah, what I, what I was yeah thought, that's true. What I always thought was funny, uh, you know, coming up and going through school – I was working in small businesses, and um, I went to work for for the auto parts company mm-hmm. and that major corporation. And the re- the first requirement to get hired for that job was that you had a degree. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't do it until I graduated. Yeah. So then I graduated, and I was thinking to myself the whole time because, and I even kind of dug into this a little bit under the under the radar just okay. to see if like, am I am I right here? Yeah. yeah. It did not matter where that degree came from. It could have been, sure. you know, Phoenix University or whatever they call it that yeah. you can do in in 18 months yeah. and get a bachelor's degree. Yeah. They just or needed it, it. Or it could have been the University of Nebraska that took seven or eight years and mm-hmm. a total of 50 or 60 grand, whatever it was. They didn't yep. care. They just yep. needed to know, you've got it done. There's that piece of paper. Boom, let's go. Do you think that yeah. will ever go away, though? Really? I, I feel <clears throat> like it's starting to turn. I think but it's starting to turn. Don't you? Do you think... 
Well, I is can it tell just you, these I, old school companies you that from, still want it? Yeah, I think a lot of it's old school. But okay. I can tell you from, you know, a hiring manager's point of view, because the position that I held there, I did hire and interview mm-hmm. weekly. Mm-hmm. And unless the company required it, you know, if it was like a like a middle level manager position, mm-hmm. I never even asked these people if they went to school, went to college. Right. It was always. What have you done? Tell me about yourself. Your experience. Your yeah, experience. Yeah. Let's get to know you yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Now, running our own company, and we've got mm-hmm. five, six, seven employees, whatever it is at any given time. Every time I hire somebody, that doesn't even come to my mind. Yeah. I don't I don't care where they went to school. All I care about is, are they a good person? Yep. Can they show me that they've, you know, worked hard? Are they relevant hard? for the job? Do, do they, they fit the fit job? Do they fit the position? Yeah. Right, yep. I do think that, there's some value in the idea of if someone went to college, no matter where they went, that they started something and they completely they finished, they finished it. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think there's some value in that yeah. um, idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're in absolutely at college. There is things that you get exposed to and things that you learn. Oh, yeah. That you don't if you're not there, you know, in, in that particular field. Yep. Um, but I also think that. If folks didn't go, but they they just worked, uh-huh. they're going to learn all that stuff in the in the real world in that real job anyway. Yeah, you do get exposed a lot, though. Yeah. you do, and yeah. I I think that's one of the the greatest things uh, from college. You re, you reminded me there of something that one of my professors told me uh, back when I was going to school because I got a I got a dual degree, I got one in business management, mm-hmm. bachelor's of science in business management, and I thought, okay, okay. I need to get an internship. You know, that's everyone was getting internships. Mm-hmm. Right. It's worth two credits or this or that over the summer. So let me go, you know, push a pencil for some company over the summer, you know. And <laughs> he's just a good old boy, typical, you know, with a gray mustache and kind of long <laughs> hair, you know, just a, totally ex- ex- glasses, wire glasses. Like if you picture a business professor, that's this that's guy. That's him. Yep. Yeah. Got it in my and head. I'm like, all right, I, I, I printed out all the paperwork here for this, uh, do an internship. Um, are there any places around Nebraska City or Auburn that I could, you know, go work for? Any companies like, you know, don't even do the internship. Just go get a job. Just that's go. what he said. Yeah, that's what he told me. <laughs> like, Just go get a job. That'll, weigh, that'll, that'll be better on a resume than this little two-and-a-half-hour credit thing that we do. And he wasn't throwing shade at the college. He was just – preparing me for yeah. the real world. He was yeah. telling me what I need to hear there, yeah. you know? Because yeah. companies that are hiring, that's that's the stuff that they want to see. Yeah. They they like to see the fact that, yes, you finished college if, if they value that. Mm-hmm. But then if you have that real world working experience, and that's what we've always yeah. told our kids as well and our daughter who's in college now, get out there and, and get a job in that field, get that internship or whatever it is, mm-hmm. just so that you have that real experience. Yeah. And from a learning standpoint, we're kind of getting off on a tangent here, but uh, it you, at least for me, I learn so much more effectively when I'm actually doing it. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. actually oh, doing it. Of course. You know, and then I can reference, here's, mm-hmm. okay, oh yeah, the teacher said that. Oh, I see what's going on here. So that, be, you know, that becomes good. But, you know, the point we're making... I think I think we all understand that there's definitely value in college. Yeah, it's not nece- it's not necessary for everybody. Mm-hmm. There's definitely value, but you have to make the decision, and all these people made the decision to take on that bill. Right. And now it's there's so many people out there. Literally, you can watch all these news stories that are so freaking pumped about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're finally doing what they should be doing and taking this away and on and on. And I I just don't get it. I, I don't understand what world they're living in. Can I throw some kerosene on our? <laughs> yeah, on our throw rain? it. So the 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 pro was that this forgiveness would help rectify racial inequality. The con to this pro is student loan debt forgiveness would disproportionately help rich or more financially secure college graduates. Like, isn't that the same? Yeah. Like I, I feel like we're you're you're just running you're barking up the same tree there. Yeah. yeah. And we already kind of covered that, didn't we? Like if you had a better starting point, two parents that are together with a dual income that can help you out, so you don't have to take out as much as loan. Of course, you're going to have less debt. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's and a then, duh. And I don't <laughs> care what world you're in. If you have more money, things are probably going to be better financially. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I think I think most of those most of those kids or those families that they just referenced there that they're saying will be disproportionately helped and they shouldn't be probably don't have these loans anyway. Right. They, the, their debt's not racked up. So yeah, if yeah. you're going to give them ten grand, that ten grand will probably pay off the bill entirely because that's yeah. all they had out. Yeah. You, you know? know what? Us talking about this ten grand made me think of when our oldest went to Colorado State. So it goes back on the college. For her good grades and her or her GPA coming into college, if you held a whatever, mm-hmm. you got ten thousand dollars towards your schooling. All like, right there, you go. Okay, so that came back on the college. They decided if you carried, I think it was a three nine to you know four to whatever, then you're going to get this money. Mm-hmm. I mean, rewarding like rewarding, rewarding that to me for, seems. You know, to, to go above and beyond and really stay focused on their yeah. studies and things like that. Yeah, great. That's the that's what I'm saying. Mo- so that's the yeah. educational mo- yeah. a model. Right. That, that 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 you're actually earning it though. Exactly. Because yeah. you, you did it. Yes. So to me, that makes sense. But then instead, we're just going to give all these other people ten thousand dollars that just because. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm just trying to figure this out. This there's seems a, a little odd. There's a hilarious meme, and I'll have to look it up, but it is pretty funny. And it, it, when you think of millennial and a kid with a cricket little nap hat on and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it went something like, uh, "Well, I'm teaching you all financial <laughs> uh, awareness." You right. know, giving giving a a kid that didn't care about his education fifty thousand dollars and expecting him to pay it back. There you go. <laughs> There's your lesson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I see. Uh, like on social media, you know. I'm on like these different forums, like mm-hmm. for my truck, like the diesel engines or whatever. You know, I stay connected to these things and see what they're doing. And immediately, people started posting all these memes like that that were like, yep. "Oh, my my truck loan has now decided it's identifying as a student loan." Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and need same with my house. But <laughs> it, but the point is, is that we also made the decision to buy yeah. that truck. a $60,000 truck or whatever yeah. it is, to yeah. buy a yeah. $200,000 house or whatever it is, yeah. knowing we're going to have to pay it back. Uh, you made an excellent point there with the truck. It reminded me of uh, kind of the, the first wave of, you know, rah, rah, blah, blah, <laughs> you know, the back and forth. Uh, and the argument we made earlier, okay, you need this education to get the big boy job, to get the promotion. Um, but then on the other, the other side of that coin a uh, guy that didn't go to college that went right into the workforce and let's say started a concrete company, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he needs that mixer, and that's like seventy thousand dollars. Well, there's no debt forgiveness for that. None. True. Okay. Yeah. And and that actually he needs that. He like that's a tangible thing that he needs for yeah. his business. And we're already poking holes in this whole you need the diploma for your job thing, but the mixer. The concrete mixer. No, that's a thing you actually. That's need. a great. Yeah. That's a great comparison Very because good. if you think about it, you know, one kid decides I'm going to go take out a hundred thousand dollars in loans mm-hmm. to go to school, and another kid decides I'm going to go take out a hundred thousand dollars in loans to build a business. Yep. And the one that builds the business that decides to build the business doesn't get the the handout. Any forgiveness. Not only does he not get the handout, he is paying taxes to pay for that handout. Yeah. To he's pay getting, for his buddy. Yeah, to that get, went to school. Yeah. yeah. Like he's getting double whammy. You yeah. know, like, and to your point you made a, a while ago, I, like, what does that say to future generations? Like, but now, now, right. <laughs> you, you yeah. know better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to give everybody else this one, but but the rest of you... You understand that they yep. they made a bad decision, so you better make the right decision, you know. Can I read the last yeah. two uh, pro and cons here? Yeah. yeah. Pro, number three, or whatever we're on, <laughs> denying student loan debtors the benefits of bankruptcy, benefits that all other debtors have access to, is unfair. Like, man, that's that's a word salad there. The, the pros are getting pretty deep. Yeah. It sounds like they're saying denying if, student loan. If I'm hearing debtors, that correctly, they're saying that if you have a student loan, you're not allowed to claim bankruptcy on it. I I guess uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The U.S. Supreme Court said 1915. Wow. We're once again we're getting pretty deep here. That the benefits of bankruptcy allow debtors to start afresh, free from obligations and responsibilities. Um, and that was Henry Ford made that. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. This is. 
wild. Uh, the con, student loan discharge via bankruptcy would allow borrowers to abuse the loan system and encourage colleges to increase tuition. So we're already talking about how tuition rates are already through the roof uh-huh. and they're, a, they're for profit and they have great marketing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this would kind of, uh, would you say, is that gaslighting? That would give them the the free pass, like, oh, yeah, jack it up even more. That's what I was kind of thinking. Do you think yeah. they're going to price gouge? Why wouldn't or they? Or are they not going to come down but just make it look like it's cheaper, you know, because of this forgiveness? Yeah. I, I think that goes back to, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that colleges um, – they, that they just got to trim the fat. That there, there's too much. They charge too much. This is the bottom line, yeah. and, uh, and, Man, and 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 that system. You know, I mean, and you could go into yeah, that'd be another podcast we could talk about. You know, with the amount of money that gets donated to colleges and boosters Gosh, and stuff gotta, that yeah. gets wasted. And I mean, it's really a crazy institution. Kind of seems look like at a crime. One of the, all of that, all of those moving pieces. God, that's so rough, though. Because I mean, okay, so we're agreeing that. All these colleges, the ones that we're targeting here, they're for profit. These forty thousand, mm-hmm. thirty thousand, mm-hmm. you know, sixty thousand dollars a year uh, type of tuition type deals. Uh, but one of the basic things you learn uh, when you do go to college, <laughs> yeah, is that if your company's not growing, it is straight up dying. If you're just like flatlining, yeah. like you yeah. just have the same sales every year, year in and year out, no, you're dying because everything else around you is going up. Whether it be raw goods cost the water bill, whatever it is. So you need to be growing in order for your company to even be around. And you can only take on so many months in a row of not growing. So how are you going to tell all these universities, hey, lower your rates? They can't do it. My my perspective is that the college should not be a business. So you're talking about businesses like that yes. if you're not it's growing, run like you're a dying. Business. Yes. I don't think that's what colleges should be. I don't think that's what colleges should be. I don't mm. think that's what healthcare should be. I'm not saying that all this stuff should be free, <laughs> but I'm saying that they should not yeah, yeah. be profit motivated. Hmm. They're, they should be helping. They, they are there to provide a service that our society needs. And it's, it's not, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be uh, like, a want or if I can afford it or not. It should be something that is affordable and quality. Okay. When, That's my opinion. When we release this podcast, I'm going to rename you Ben Gandhi, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. No. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm just, I mean, yeah. I just think there's so much common sense into what you said there. Is, there. Yeah. Um, but the reality is yeah, there's... USC is for profit. Yeah. I mean, they straight up just sold uh, – people and that all came crashing down and no repercussions just made up de- de- degrees yeah. and sold it to really rich kids uh totally fleecing everything about the educational system and overcharging for it as well and it's 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 funny because they're we keep beating this dead horse but they're hiding behind the fact that this is what you have to do if you want to get ahead yeah you know so like it's being it's being mm-hmm. billed as a requirement to be successful in life, yet mm-hmm. it's a for-profit organization. It just doesn't. The shit just doesn't add up. One of the most impressive people that I've met recently through a, a networking group. She's a half owner of an appliance repair company. Mm-hmm. Started from the ground up. Her and her husband, and and she's feisty, right? <laughs> She'll go on a rant every mm-hmm. once in a while. <laughs> And just within one of her um, kind of spilling her guts to me type of deals, she goes, I didn't I didn't even end up with a high school diploma. I, I moved here. I moved there. And I just thought, oh, hell with it. I just want to get in the workforce. I'm like, well, wow. And she's like making so much more money than me, owns her own business, has for years and years mm-hmm. and years. And that just shows you how worthless even the high school diploma is. She doesn't even have that to her name. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think I, I view her as just like so high above me. You know, like where I'm at and what I've accomplished. It shows you the value of getting de- after determination, yeah. hard work, all that yeah. kind of yeah. stuff, and all and all that stuff can come into play in going to college as well. It certainly can. Mm-hmm. I, I want to make sure that people understand that we're not talking down the value of an education. There's absolutely value there, but it's just it's just not being run properly. 
I attribute so much to my college experience, like like quite a bit to where I'm at. I've even, I met my wife there, mm-hmm. you know, and I got to play football. I got to be part of a team. Uh, I got to, you know, kind of be a kid for four or five more years. You know what I mean? And right. play and football. <laughs> you know? Sure, yeah. <laughs> and you also figured out a way to pay for it. Yes, I did. Yeah. Wait, you didn't get ten thousand dollars? Wait a second. <laughs> No, I did not. And it just recently got all paid off, too. I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> Why did I do that? But it's it, because, yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, so, yeah, with I mean, with you like that, and I was just thinking that it'd be really interesting to have somebody sitting in here with us right now mm-hmm. that has, still has 50000 out mm-hmm. and what their perspective is. I mean, you I You know, rem- like, anybody would love, like, sure, give me ten grand, sure. Like, yeah. I'm not asking for it, but you're handing yeah. it out. I'll take it. Yeah. But- how how do so many of those common folks really feel about it? Like, do they feel like, no, I'm not owed that? I mean, That's like as an example, I've got yeah, I've got three. I think it's three um, stimulus checks or whatever the hell they called them. Mm-hmm. That like when I think it was when Biden first got elected that all these were getting sent out. I've, they're still sitting on my desk. They're like two years old because I was looking at that and I'm like, what? I I don't need. You actually got a check? Yeah. Oh yeah. We really? Uh, they just kept showing up. I'm like, I, this is not – our our family is doing okay. Ours were just straight up hardwired into our accounts. Yeah, I don't, there must have been something wrong with the way the account was set up for us or something. But huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was just – but either way, that was showing up. And, and the point is, what I'm saying with like these folks who still have outstanding loans, I bet there's a lot of them that say, no – I yeah. I made the decision. I'm taking responsibility. Yeah. I don't I don't need that. I don't deserve that or whatever. You know what I mean? Man, but if 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 the free cheese is there, it would be I mean, hard to pass kinda, up. Yeah, aren't you kind of an I idiot mean, I not agree. For taking it? Well, that's you know? my, and that's my point with with those stimulus checks. You know, I've still yeah. got those sitting on my desk that are a couple years old that I never cashed because I didn't feel right putting that money in my bank because mm-hmm. I knew that money was coming from everyone Somewhere. else. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm. Mm-hmm. To your point, aren't you kind of an idiot for not taking it? Because people are going to pay for it anyway. It doesn't matter whether I put it in my account or not. But for myself, I was just like, I don't really feel like I should be getting this. So uh, it came to my attention years ago that at a very wealthy school district uh, in Nebraska, something ridiculous, like 80% of the kids, I know it, it was in the 90s, it was in the 90 percentile, they were all on low-income free lunch Mm. payouts. Mm-hmm. And I mean, <laughs> you just go to the high school and look at the SUVs pulling up to pick up little Johnny after school. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. Yeah. That, no, they're all really nice SUVs. No yeah. And, and it's a small enough school district that you know everybody and you know, <laughs> you know, like I said, like there's, there's no way, but you know, these kids, legitimately went on the free lunch program, right? And then these kids did too because they got accepted. So now then it just starts this domino effect where you're the idiot. You're the one wearing the dunce cap if you don't go get free lunches. Yeah, everyone else is getting it. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. it got to the point where, yeah, it was like mid or upper 90s. All these low-income kids were getting free lunches. Like, oh, my God, there's probably like five kids per class that need this or should have this. But everybody was in on it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're an idiot if you didn't. I think that's kind of what happens with things like this, you know, to yeah. your point is that it starts coming out and then people are just like, hey, you know, I'll take some. I'll it's take It's acceptable. Some. Yeah. Or, you know, guy, I, I hate being on this soapbox. I really do. So more <laughs> you know? rules about all this is, is, is coming out. They're slowly progressing. Or it seems like it's they, like yeah, I, a, I think there's still a lot so of information gray. to come out. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know. It's the same kind of thing. They're, everyone mm-hmm. has the same questions. As an example, you, you know, let's say you collect... Well, actually, it's so it's it. I think they're federally held loans, so they'll just wipe out a, a you know, it'll just like go down chunk. ten thousand. Okay. It's not like they're going to send you a check. Mm-hmm. It'll go down ten thousand, or at least that's it. Yeah, the, they're just kind of the printing, printing fake money. Yeah, so yeah. It, it goes down. They relieve some of that debt. Um, but then there's questions like, okay, is that going to be classified as income? Am I going to have to pay tax oh, on that ten thousand? Okay. So now I actually only got. Eight instead of ten because I yeah. have to pay tax, or you know, yeah. like there's all these unknowns that are going to be coming out. It's not going to be as good as people think it is for sure, but no. it's it goes back to what you said at the beginning and why I said I don't think this is the beginning of the conversation. This is more of towards the end of the conversation of it being politically motivated because mm-hmm. that's all it is. I mean, it just it really it just makes someone 
a, a lot of vulnerable minds think mm-hmm. that guy and that party is taking care of me. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna, he gets it. He yeah. gets my strife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even that, it, it reminds me of when we had Emily, where. She was talking about it's really tough for me to offer help or even say that you do need help, you know, like. Sure, yeah. And you use the word vulnerable. Like, I I think that's a great way to categorize that. But if I am vulnerable, you know, I did quote air quotes. (laughs) Yeah. I don't want to hear that from you. I'm not vulnerable. Right. You know know what what I mean? What are you talking about? I do want a free, I do want debt free loan. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I think, I think we've kind of made our point, obviously. Yeah we all here feel the same way. And I think there's a lot of people that feel the way that we do. Um, w- and it's just, again, just like everything else that we do, just want to kind of bring a common folk, yeah. everyday Midwestern person perspective to this whole concept. Dude, go back. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. I, uh, I love watching old documentaries and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And just the origin of, of myth and stories. And man, the, the, the Pied Piper, that is a that's a dark story, mm-hmm. and that's ex- seen it. that's exactly what we're talking mm-hmm. about. Okay. If if uh, if you don't pay your debts, well, he's coming, he's yeah. coming. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, like it's just amazing that, that was centuries ago, and some of these basic principles that you just can't escape it. That's the way life is. Yeah, you borrow, you better pay it back. Yeah, you sign a contract, you better you better. I just don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the bottom line is, I just don't understand in what world that someone lives in that they think mm-hmm. that it's a good idea. They can make a commitment to something and you, not have. I to I don't know that they think that they think it. that it's. It right. comes back to oh, this is free. It's free. I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Yeah, I'll take I think it. yeah. I think based Period. on what we've talked about here today, I think that's probably a good point. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of people that yeah. And I do them. hope. That the big picture, that it triggers what we're talking about, a little reform as far as the universities are concerned. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Get, get it back. Get this back right. Figure offer it out. Offer more trade. In trade schools, you're starting to see a real big spike in that. Uh-huh. I think that that's a good thing. Um, but even the big universities, if you still want to take a big piece of pie, break it down, make it affordable, make it so I don't have to go for four years, whatever. And I, I think you are starting to see a lot of that. So yeah. if nothing else, I do think this is – you know, igniting discussions like what we're having Mm -hmm. and on down the road, you are going to see changes on not only the micro levels, but the macro as well. I agree. Well, good. Well, I think I'm going to bring this one to the close. The dog's getting a little antsy. I'm pretty sure she's got a pee. (laughs) Millie, Millie, Millie. Yes, she is. So, uh, you guys don't have anything else, do you? No. Hey, that was it. Let's just, uh, smash it again though. Uh, if they give us a little bit of a review, they got some free merch coming their way, right? Every review that we there see we after this drops for the next week, we will contact and send free t-shirts. Well, Love just it. like that. Love it. All right. Sounds Closing good. Closing out, guys. Peace. Later. Thanks.